Meeting. Okay, it's one o'clock. I'd like to call this meeting to order. The proceedings of this meeting will be recorded and made available on the internet. We can move on to item 1.2 of our agenda, which is rolls, roll call. Jesse Clark, or Kirk, would you please call the roll? Thank you. Mayor Lamsett, are you present? I am present. Deputy Mayor Armstrong? Present. Councillor Franzen? Present. Councillor Braybrook? Present. Councillor Cadigan? Present. For staff, we have Donna Taggart, CAO Treasurer? Present. Evan Grieger, Director of Public Works? Present. Adele Arbor, Planner? Present. Sarah Delamarter, Junior Planner? Present. Bianca Jankisevic, Deputy Clerk? Present. Rachel Stark, Economic Development and Marketing Coordinator? Present. And Chelsea Carpenter, Supervisor of Waste Public Works Coordinator? Present. And Jesse Clark, Director of Corporate Services, Clerk is present. Okay, thank you very much, Jesse. We will move on to item 1.3 of our agenda, which is land acknowledgement and moments of reflection. We respectfully acknowledge that Trent Lakes and Peterborough County are located on the Treaty 20 Michisaugee Territory in the traditional chair territory of the Michisaugee and Chippewa Nations, collectively known as the William Treaty's First Nation, which include Alderville, Bozale, Curve Lake, Georgina Island, Hiawatha, Rama, and Scugog Island First Nation. Trent Lakes respectfully acknowledges that the Williams Treaty First Nations are the stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. We will now take a moment to reflect on these principles and our duties and responsibilities as members of council. Okay, we can move on to item two of our agenda, which is the disclosure of pecuniary interest. If any member of council has an interest in an item on the agenda, please state it before discussing anything about that item. Is there any pecuniary interest? I am seeing no. We can move on to item three of our agenda, which is the approval of the agenda as it circulated. I'm prepared to make a motion. See Councillor Franzen for a mover, and the seconder is Councillor Cadigan. Any conversation? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. And then we can move on to item four of our agenda, which is the adoption of the minutes from our council meeting of June the 6th of 2023, which is item 4.1. I'm sure we've had a chance to peruse them. I see Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a mover and Councillor Cadigan for a seconder. Any conversation? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? The motion to adopt the minutes has carried. Okay, we can on to item five of our agenda, liaison ports for committee, council boards and committees. Does anyone have any conversation? I'm seeing none. We can move on to, I will now, item six of our agenda, which is a statutory public meeting pursuant to the Planning Act. I would entertain a motion to suspend a regular minute, mini meeting and go into a public meeting. I'll so I see move. Councilor Cadigan for a mover and Councilor Braybrook for a seconder. All in favor? <clears throat> that motion is carried. We are now in an open meeting. We can move on to item 6.1 of our agenda. And I'm sure Sarah Della Martyr, our junior planner, would like to introduce the file. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. I'll uh, read out the preamble and then I'll go directly into the uh, public meeting notice. Thank you for correcting me. This is a public meeting under Section 34 of the Planning Act to consider an amendment to the Municipality's Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw, B2014-070. A notice of public meeting for today's application containing the prescribed information was circulated to all landowners within a 120 meter radius of the subject lands at least 20 days prior to this meeting. The notice was also mailed to all prescribed agencies, public bodies, and persons in accordance with the regulations. Anyone wanting to be notified of any decision from today's public meeting must send in a written request to either myself or the clerk and the notice of passing will be mailed to them, setting out the method and manner in which appeals may be made to the Ontario Land Tribunal. Please note that if a person does not send a written comment prior to the passing of the bylaw or make an oral submission at a public meeting, that person may not be entitled to appeal the decision. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Introduce the file, please. This is a thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. 
This is a public meeting for file number 23-06 to consider a zoning bylaw amendment submitted by agent Kevin M. Duguay on behalf of the property owner Sonia Maria Kranzel for the lot located at 147 Sugarbush Crescent. The purpose of the zoning bylaw amendment is to rezone the property to recognize the existing in-water boathouse foundation constructed without the benefit of a building permit from the municipality of Trent Lakes and to permit the continued construction required to complete the single story in water boathouse. The existing foundation was constructed in the year 2010 without municipal permits. Parks Canada, however, issued permits for the in water boathouse and surrounding armor stone in the same year. The permits issued by Parks Canada have already recognized the legitimacy of the boathouse project and thus the aim of the proposal is to address the oversight of the municipal permit by seeking approval to allow the continued existence of the boathouse foundation slip and to complete the construction of a single story boathouse on said foundation. The proposed in water boathouse is a single story structure with a total ground floor area of 68.62 square meters. The existing boathouse has a deficient northerly side yard setback measuring 1.86 meters from the permitted setback of 15 meters. The proposed rezoning application will also recognize the in water boathouse as a permitted use for this particular property. The application was accompanied by a planning justifications report in support of the proposed application. There is a planning report on the agenda from the municipality's planning staff. The report states that the application is generally consistent with the provincial policy statement and growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe. The report also notes that a four page list of conditions were attached to the Parks Canada permit. Um, which include mitigation measures and best use practices of that time to protect the lake and surrounding natural heritage features from the effects of construction. The report notes that if mitigate, mitigative pardon me, measures continue to be respected in order to complete the construction of an in-water boathouse, the completion of the boathouse project is not anticipated to have negative impacts on the environment. The report also notes that the alternative to permitting the structure's continued existence would be to require the applicant to remove it from the property in its entirety. However, it should be noted that this option could present potential negative impacts on the surrounding ecology, as the existing foundation abuts the water body directly, acting as a barrier between the shoreline and the water. The removal of the structure and reintrodu reintroduction of fill into the dredged area to bring the property back to its original state may not be desirable for the subject lands and could be a costly endeavor if a professional were to evaluate the lands and prescribed a list of remediation requirements um, in order to mitigate the potential impact to Pigeon Lake. A permit from Parks Canada was issued for the structure in question. This permit also included several requirements in order for Parks Canada's continued support on the project. Whilst the permit does explicitly state that it is the applicant's responsibility to ensure that the proposed upland boathouse meets the requirements of all other federal and provincial agencies in the municipality. The permit from Parks Canada confirms that the proposal was deemed appropriate by an applicable approval authority and was at that point in time deemed to not have any potential negative impacts on the waterfront environment. The municipality has received one letter of objection from one of the circulated neighboring property owners. This letter of opposition is attached to today's agenda. The municipality has received comments from Public Works stating that they have no objection to the proposal. The municipality has not received any additional comments from any external agencies or members of the public regarding the requested zoning bylaw amendment. Further, if any members of the public did not register with the clerk indicating their intent to make an oral submission but would like to do so at this time, please use the raise a hand feature online or if you're part of the physical gallery, physically raise your hand now so that we are able to promote you in order for you to make an oral submission. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much there. I will ask now if there's anyone in either the virtual or the, the actual gallery that are for or against this application. I'm seeing them in the actual gallery. And Jesse Clark, do we have someone with their hand up? Thank you. Uh, I do. In the uh, virtual gallery, we have Kevin Duguay. Okay. Can you uh, unmute yourself, Kevin, and we can speak with you. Thank you. Uh, uh, 
uh, Mayor, I believe the uh, clerk has already undertaken to uh, unmute me, so thank you for that. Um, um, I have uh, considered the uh, staff report uh, prepared and reviewed by your junior planner, and I can advise the um, I can advise council that I am in support of I support its recommendations. So my client. Uh, did not construct this uh, or did not proceed with this uh, in water, this boathouse. This was undertaken by her father. So she's inherited a partly constructed, call it boat slip. And if, and I have visited the property and, and the boat slip itself, the back wall of it actually functions like a retaining wall in, in large part. So if it was not permitted, there would be significant and negative impacts upon the shoreline um, if this was not permitted. Simply stated, the intent is to finish the boathouse, put a roof on the boathouse, and continue to allow it to be used for its um, current function. I can also advise the um, I can advise council that um, Parks Canada has uh, issued a series of permits over time, and I have reviewed all of those permits, and I'm satisfied that the structure as it exists, including the proposed completion, which is essentially some siding and roofing that that undertaking would not undermine the uh, intent of the Parks Canada permits. Um, we're not at, this is not a, an application to construct or build something new. This is simply to finish something that was started before my client, Ms. Krenzel's um, inheritance of this property. We have heard, we are not aware of any environmental or ecological concerns from any of the commenting agencies, including that of Parks Canada. I would make my, and I also, uh, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, committee members, um, I also did produce a professional planning opinion that the applications filed represented good planning, was consistent with the provincial policy statement in keeping with the growth plan and generally in keeping with the local planning instruments. I make myself available now to respond to any questions that might arise from my uh, uh, deputation and thank you for the opportunity to address council okay thank you very much kevin Dugay. i asked does anyone on council have any questions of kevin see deputy mayor armstrong go ahead yes thank you Mayor said i'm not sure that, that you can answer this um mr Dugay. it might be our planning department but this uh the partial uh construction of this was done in 2010. i know we have a bylaw from 2014 that does not permit in-house boathouses period i'm just wondering in 2010 was and that was an amended bylaw did was that bylaw in place that prohibited in-house in water boathouses uh deputy mayor excuse me uh through the deputy mayor armstrong um i'm acknowledging that the construction has proceeded all along without the applicable permit from the municipality so i can't comment if in 2010 the concern structure was permitted or not. What we're addressing today is to remedy that once and for all. And if I may just follow up, thank you for that. And it's sort of a technical question, but, and I, I agree with the recommendation because it seems to do the least environmental damage uh, overall, all things considered. But I am concerned that if people build without a permit and we at a later point in time approve it, after the fact, is there no kind of penalty? I mean, anybody could be doing this. We just do it, it's against the uh, regulation. Uh, at a later point, we approve it, and for very good reasons, but the person pays no penalty. So, so it, may, may, to may I respond in part to that uh, question? I think it's a question. Um, the, the applicant, the, the, pre, the property owner had indeed applied uh, and sorry, I can relate to the uh, statement in quest of counselor. I sometimes get caught making a statement. At first. Uh, not, but the pr previous property owner did secure permits from Parks Canada. And I can't really speak to that context, but perhaps at the time uh, they may have understood or thought, well, I have my Parks Canada permit, I can proceed and I might not require something from the township. Um, a precedent that if there's a precedent being set here is that Parks Canada permits are required 
that somebody has gone, undertaken to up, provide an updated survey at their expense. They've hired a professional plan at their expense. So it's not, I don't view it as this would necessarily, the floodgates would be open and persons would use this as a basis to do something contrary to your bylaws. Okay, thank you very much. Does that answer your question, Deputy Mayor? Kind of. Uh, it, it does, it, it doesn't. <coughs> I do believe the change is obviate the fact that we are in fact approving something after the fact and there's no penalty and that's that was really my it's a larger concern than on this file okay i, th I think sarah de la would like to answer the question about our zoning go ahead thank you mayor lamb's head through you um so i don't want to speak on behalf of our uh building staff because obviously i'm a planner um however I do know that uh, if structures are caught built without a permit, um, they have to pay double the fee in order for that permit to be issued. So um, with respect to uh, fees and um, uh, penalties, that there is a, uh, a penalty that indeed involved. Excellent, thank you, appreciate that, sir. And I do believe in 2010, we could have an in the water boat house in the municipality of Okay, any other questions? Well, any questions? Okay. I think we are done. We move on to a motion to reconvene a regular meeting. The Councilor Franzen for a mover, Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a seconder. All in favor? That motion is carried. Okay. We are now back in our regular council meeting. We can move on to item seven which is business arising out of our statutory public meeting. Sarah de la Marker, would you like to speak to this item? 7.1. Thank you, through you, Mayor Lambshead. Uh, there was a public meeting held for file number 23-06. At this time, staff are recommending that council receives the report from planning staff and that council supports the requested zoning bylaw amendment attached to today's agenda. Thank you. Go ahead, Councilor Braver. I'd like to make a motion to receive and also uh, that Council approve the zoning bylaw amendment. Okay, we have a motion. Do I have a seconder for that motion? I see Councilor Cadigan for a second. Any other conversation? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Thank you very much. Okay, we can move on to item eight of our agenda. We can go to 8.1, which is Stephanie McPherson, our CAO in the Trent Lakes Public Library. Go ahead, Stephanie. You can to do your presentation. Thank you. Um, Mary Lamb's Heading Council, I'm here today to talk about the library, the success so far this year, and the plans for this summer. It's not going to over. Daryl? No? Okay, Bianca, can you take back over control, please? With the shot. <laughs> Do you want to just give it another try there? A little too far. There, thank you, Bianca. All right, so um, both branches uh, of Trent Lakes Public Library have extended summer hours so that we can meet the needs of the community. We also have a reciprocal borrowing agreement with other local municipalities to ensure that all of our residents have access to a nearby library. So for example, those residents in Galway or in Bob Cajun are able to get a free card with the city of Kortha Lakes and uh, the residents on the Selwyn side of Buckhorn can use our library as well. So this is mutually beneficial because it helps us increase our statistics and it also allows everybody to have access to the library. We have several families from Curve Lake who come and use our programs and our book collection. So that is great to see as well. Uh, and we also leave our Wi-Fi on all of the time. So in the evenings or if we're closed, people are free to sit outside either branch and use the Wi-Fi. The next slide. Maybe. Uh, so this month we're celebrating Indigenous History Month and so to honor this we've had articles in the newspaper as well as displays in the library and we also had a special uh, 
a special guest with Kristen Gillespie come in who discussed some of her traditions and her culture and taught us about why they are so important. And she also performed a traditional smudging ceremony, which we all learned a lot from. We were grateful to have her there. And also this month is Pride Month. And people who identify as LGBTQ2S plus often experience barriers when accessing necessary services due to discrimination or harassment. The coming out process can be a critical time for families. Our library has a dedicated collection that focuses on the LGBTQS2S community. Our print material includes information, books, biographies, and autobiographies, as well as fiction books with main characters who are part of that community. We also have pamphlets for organizations that people can access help or support or more information if they need. This week we'll be celebrating with an inclusive story time by reading Pride Colors and they'll be making rainbow heart crafts. Uh, and this summer, we're anticipating a very busy summer for programming. There will be a new story time in Cavendish at, in July and August. So it'll be every Tuesday morning at 11. The first program will feature the Trent Lakes Fire and Rescue. So if you know of any families with kids who would like to attend, please let them know uh, about this great program. The Buckhorn Storytime will continue to run every Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock. We are happy to host the Trent Lakes Fire Rescue again on July 5th. The Peterborough OPP will be coming July 12th and the paramedics will be there August 2nd and they're every Wednesday at 11. And we will also continue to have a take home crafts available at both branches. We will be having a tween program every Saturday uh, from 11 to 3, which is just a drop-in program. In addition to that program, we'll be having STEAM activities. And STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math, which will be available throughout July and August at both branches. This is made possible through a very generous donation by the Kinsman Club of Lindsay. And then for seniors and adults, we will continue to run the Knit and Lit every Tuesday morning in Buckhorn at 11 o'clock. Through this program, we have been able to donate over 20 cat blankets, cat and dog blankets to the local animal shelter. So it has been um, beneficial for more than just the library. We continue to offer computer assistance at both branches so we can help with phones, computers, um, iPads and e-readers and whatever else people can bring in, we will help them with. And of course, we offer Reader's Advisory to help everybody find that next great book. We have recently started uh, or, or made official a partnership with the Trent Lakes Outreach Center and Food <clears throat> Bank, and we are a drop-off location at both branches. And this summer, we'll be offering a fine forgiveness program. So if people have late fines, we will erase them or forgive them um, with a donation to the Food Bank. So this helps both the, the greater community and the library. We are in the works of, with the library board of creating our strategic plan. And over the next two months, we'll be asking the community for input of what uh, resources they would like to see from the community and what services they would like to see to help us um, realistically grow and meet the greater needs of the community. And then this fall is our reaccreditation audit. Accreditation supports the ongoing library development, performance measurement, and public library advocacy work in our community. This process is a major achievement and something that the entire community can take pride in. And only 13% of library systems in Ontario are accredited. The Goodbye Room is open and it can continues to run. Um, all of the proceeds that are raised through the Goodbye Room go directly to the library. There's a great group of dedicated volunteers that continue to do an excellent job and the library is very grateful for all of their hard work. They're currently open three days a week and they're looking for volunteers to try to increase that to four days. Okay, my favorite part, statistics. <laughs> These are our circulation statistics for the first five months of the year. The blue on the screen is our physical material collection that is circulating, and the green is our electronic books, or our ebooks and our audiobooks. You can see 
thankfully we have surpassed our pre-COVID numbers. So um, we're very happy to see that. The physical material circulation is down uh, compared to previous years, but I think that's just natural with the growing dependence on technology. And that's why I stack them so that you can see that overall our circulation is going up and the library is well used. Um, all right. And the next one, this is our children's attendance for the first five months of the year. Um, so this includes our, our regular Wednesday program, our daycare visits, which is every Thursday, and our take-home crafts, as well as our outreach <coughs> programs with the Buckhorn School. Um, we're really proud to say that we have almost doubled our uh, previous highest, uh, which would have been 2019 number, and we are looking forward to continuing to see that increase. Um, the Cavendish Youth Group is not included in this number because we do partner with the Community Centre, but it is doing very well as well. It has run for 24 weeks and has had a total participation of 432 um, children, and there are approximately 18 kids who attend regularly. And then the value. So what does this mean in money terms? If the members of our community had to pay for every single service, not even every, of the ones that I've discussed um, that the libraries used, it would have cost them over $235,000 just in the first five months of the year. So as you can see, every dollar that is put into the library, you get several dollars back. Um, and again, these statistics do not include the, the Cavendish branch, but you would add another 3,500 onto that or not the Cavendish branch, sorry, the Cavendish Youth Group. We'd add another 3,500 onto that. This chart I received from the Stormont, Dundas, and Glengarry website, so it is in Canadian dollars. And yes, you can see it is just in the first five months that it's quite low. And that's it. Are there any questions? Thank you very much for that presentation. Does anyone have any questions for Stephanie? Go ahead, Councillor Schreiber. No, you're up to the Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. The deputy. Go ahead, <laughs> Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Go right ahead. Well, thank you, Councillor. And through you, Mayor Armstrong. Uh, I just had two comments. Um, the first one was have we have a new board member on the library board of which I'm a part, and her one of her comments after the first meeting and the agenda was sent out was. And this is Jana Klein, who has been here forever and involved in everything. Said I had absolutely no idea how many activities and programs were offered by our libraries. So I thought that was quite a testament to the uh, uh, activities that you do run. Um, the other thing is a personal one. I have a card at Peterborough Library as well as locally. And uh, I now see that we have a reciprocal arrangement for them and I don't have to pay them to get my library card renewed. So I'm very grateful for that. <laughs> so thank you for continuing to initiate new programs. <clears throat> Hey, Councilor Griffin, go ahead. Through you, Mayor. Uh, thanks very much for your presentation. Just a quick question. What would you attribute the like, 799 uh, the children's attendance? What would you attribute that to? Because that's, that's way and above. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we have been doing more outreach and trying to promote it more. Uh, we ask ourselves that yeah. <laughs> on a daily basis. Uh, we do have more families coming in from uh, different from Selwyn coming in and the daycare coming in regularly. Doing This is the first year we've done outreach to the school. So one day a month, um, Kim Fernandez, who's the library assistant, will go to one of the classrooms at the school and do a program at the teacher's request. So for example, in May, uh, they, they did Cinco de Mayo. Uh, and then this month they did a Father's Day craft, but it was an all-inclusive Father's Day in case families just to recognize all different kinds of families. So that helps increase the statistics as well. And the take home crafts have been very popular. That is uh, something that we learned through COVID that not everybody can attend the actual program, but they still want to participate. So they'll either come to the library and do the activity there, or they can bring it home and do that with the rest of their kids. So I think that likely has the largest impact or maybe just more families moving to the area. It's a, we're very happy. Yeah, it's, 
Fantastic. And how's your cricket machine working? It? It's great. <laughs> it's, we would not be able to do all of those take home crafts and all of the school crafts without that assistance. It, uh, it cuts back staff time quite significantly. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Go ahead, Council Cranley. Just a comment. Uh, it's great job, Stephanie. And uh, I've been there when uh, the children have come in. They're a very energetic group. <laughs> and it's a lot of work for you and your staff. And you do an excellent job. And it's great to see the numbers increase. Thank you. Thank you, you, Thank you Council, for all of your support. Thank you very much for your, your presentation, Stephanie. And it's it's nice to see that your library and our library is all inclusive to everybody, whether it's a Father's Day inclusive activity or it's a pride event. I, I think it's nice that we include everyone in our community. Thank yeah. you very much for that. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? We can move on. We can, anyone take a motion to re receive them? Go ahead. Motion to receive. And I have a seconder, Councillor Cadigan. <clears throat> all in favor? That motion is carried. Thank you very much, Steph. Excellent report. Okay, we can move on to item nine of our agenda, which is delegations, and we can go over to 9.1, which is the Second Bridge Citizens Group in regards to our license occupation. I think Lynn Ballard would like to speak first. Thank you. I wonder if we could split the screen with Julie, uh, with uh, David. We were told that that could be done um, for the presentation. Jesse? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And Julian is going to be joining this group um, by the phone. So this is <laughs> a little problematic. So I'm hoping we could get our presentation up on the screen, if at all possible. And I have a hard time reading. Do we have a presentation that you... Yes, a presentation was sent, I believe. Do you have it? Uh, I don't have it, but I've made David a presenter. Okay. Yeah, I'm just uh, David Schwartz here. Sorry for that. I'm just trying to get my computer permissions to uh, to screen share. Just bear with me a moment. Okay. I'd like to thank uh, Council Mayor and uh, Councillors very much for putting us on your agenda. I realize that that was an accommodation and we very much appreciate your cooperation with respect to that because um, this was a bit of a news to us uh, effective on Thursday. So I do appreciate your response and letting us present to you today. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that's a, a testament to staff. I think that's what yes, they're doing. They, absolutely. They're very cooperative and very cooperative. And they managed to get you on there. Thank you. Yes, I, I do appreciate that. That was tremendous. Well, I'm not sure. How are we doing, David? Let me know if you can see my screen. We cannot. No screen at this time. Oh, oh we can. Okay. How about, and it, how about now? Yeah, okay. You, yep, you and it, is Julian going to come in on speak now? Uh, Sophia had indicated Julian's calling in. I'm not sure if he's in attendance as of yet. Okay. All right, so I think that um, basically what um, I'll just, Julian was supposed to make the presentation, so you're going to get my version of the presentation. <laughs> I apologize. But I, I just refer you back to the official plan where it talks about for water access property to have access to the lake. And um, we are all in agreement with this as an overall writing principle, and we want to thank you for that recognition because certainly for those of us who have water access property not having access to the lake through the dock system is excessively problematic especially now that our marinas are almost at capacity the two marinas that service uh, our particular lake so the second bridge for us is imperative for us to be able to enjoy our property and have access to that property for a number of cottagers on the lake. So this is really, really important. It, it's acknowledged in your official plan and I think we can move forward from that. I'm, I'm going to abbreviate this presentation. I know that Julian received a call uh, earlier today from Adele, I believe your planner, Adele Arbor. Um, and um, so perhaps Adele will speak afterwards. Are you with that? Yes. Um, you? Julian had indicated that he's currently muted. He's curious. Oh, he's muted. Is there a way to unmute Julian? 
Do you know what Julian's name is in the meeting? Uh, uh, it should, should be Julian Faulkner. I can give you his cell phone number if needed. I don't see Julian in as an attendee. He, he was going to make the presentation. Would it be under Sophia Singh? Yep. Okay. Okay. Julian, are you there? All right. Okay, maybe maybe David will proceed, and if Julian can uh, join us later, that's fine. But I think we'll just proceed to kind of what our concerns were with these particular revisions. Just and we're going to do it in point form, respectful of the time that you have. So can you go to that uh, point in the presentation, please, David? Yes. Okay. These are the uh, the changes. Yes, please. Okay, it, it hasn't changed on our system. Have you changed it? Yes, I did. Um, let's try to pass. I do like it when technology does work. Honest to Pete, <laughs> isn't it the truth? Okay, well, I'm, I, I do apologize to you for this because this should work tickety-boo and I don't know why it's not. Um, there we go. It looks like it worked. Notice of encroachment not permitted. Okay. So we have a few issues that around these revisions, and, and I think that they um, we just need to add that um, if, applic if other applicable permissions and permits cannot be obtained, um, we're looking at does the application mean for lands adjacent to the municipal shoreland, or does it mean for the road allowance? There was just confusion around the wording. And that's why we were asking, could we have a further look at some of these revisions? And I, I won't, maybe we'll just go to the next one, David, if you can, and we'll just quickly go through them. Except in the application by municipalities, there is some wording issues here. I think you're asking that um, applications received before May 1st will be given first priority. Any application received after April 1st may be considered by the staff after the processing of applications received on and before April 1st. There's just sign, sort of some confusion about, well, does that mean the month of April is allowed? And then if people apply, say, April 28th, are they allowed to be processed before those who apply after May? It, it's just a wording issue that maybe we can clarify if we have an opportunity to sit down as a working group. The next one, David. Um, so Julian indicated that he is online, but he's muted. Um, he used his cell phone number to register. Is there a way to see if uh, there's a call-in individual, last last four digits being 4202? No, we can't see uh, cell phone callers. Uh, Sophia's on the line, and if she's, um, if she's with Julian, she can enter the PIN provided. No, she's not with Julian, unfortunately. Um, she's going to try to call in and then bring him in so he'll be able to speak through through her line. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe we'll just go through some of the revisions that we were a little concerned about. The One of the 5.8, you indicated that applications, uh, the applicant needs to provide updated photos, which we're totally in agreement with, um, of the doc uh, annually. But then the question is, well, gee, what's the date? Because if it's early April, the docs may not be in the water. So is there some, you know, clarification that we can get around that because we want to comply, but we have to do it so that we're in compliance with whatever you're asking us to do. So that's, these are just minor. We're gone to the next one, David. Sorry to interrupt, but can everyone hear me? Okay. This is Sophia. Yes, Sophia, we can hear you. Okay, great. I will try to bring Julian in by connecting the call, okay? Okay, thank you. Oh, this is great. <laughs> 
Good, well done. Uh, from my point Maybe we can try that again. Okay. Sure they can try that. Thank we you very much. Awesome. The next item has to do with shared docs. Uh, in the case of the, in the reality is there's more than one owner of these docs. Two families usually own one doc, you know, and you're asking that one individual and one insurance policy. That we certainly can agree on. But the question is succession. So if one person happens to sell their cottage who happens to have the insurance and the ownership on it, does it automatically go to the second family that owns that doc and then they can apply? So these are just questions. I mean, they're not um, roadblocks, but they're questions that need to be answered so that we can come up with a policy that fulsome and addresses it. And uh, it causes the cottage owner some anxiety because later on in the document, it talks about uh, not renewable, you know, maybe perhaps it becomes open. Well, this is great if there's nobody else who owns that dock, but if somebody else owns the dock, it raised anxiety from A to Z, you know. So the question is, and these are just workable things that can hopefully from a working group, we can just work out. And, and it, they're not insurmountable, but they're just issues that are kind of lying there that have a little bit of a time bomb on them, to be honest with you. So David, can we move to the next one? Thank you. Um, okay, so this is the one that's raising the most angst. The agreements will be registered on title of the property associated with the encroachment. Docks encroachment for water access property on shoreline not connected to the main property of which the enco encroachment serves will have the agreement registered on the title of the water access program. We're just not clear of the intent nor clear of the financial implications of what this actually means. And this to us is an unusual request. We, I did make a quick call, and I, I think I mentioned some of the counselors, to a real estate lawyer to say, is this a norm? Mm -hmm. Is this an actual? And they said, no, usually it's done by commercial interests would, would do this. If you're building a subdivision, you'd have this kind of title on, on the property never heard of it on cottage property. So I'm just wondering, because this is an issue, could we have some more fulsome discussion around it? And can we kind of try and come, first of all, to understand what the intent is, and then is it necessary really to do it for the cottage property, considering we're not encroaching on anyone else's land, it's all municipal land where this second bridge is. And this really is a major concern. So that, that's why we're asking for the deferment, if we could, of this particular item. Next one, David, please. David? Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, this is the last one. It is asking in this document, docs be a certain size and a certain this and a certain that, which is great, but there are existing docs that are there now. Does this mean that people have to rebuild their docs to, and I'm not saying that this is the implication. I'm not saying that staff are asking for this. It's just that we need clarification with respect to what this means for the cottage owners and how we can comply with some reasonable requests and how maybe can it be grandfathered existing docs as long as they're safe, et cetera, et cetera. So, we want to work with you. We want to work in a very collaborative manner. We're hoping that the overall intent of this is to help us keep the docks at Second Bridge. And um, we are very grateful that you renew, you know, you reduce the insurance from five to two million. Hopefully that's going to make it more accessible. But we are concerned about these revisions that we were told were sort of housekeeping revisions. From a municipality point of view, they probably are housekeeping revisions. From a cottager's point of view, they're wholly macro, what's happening? You know, like we thought we had an agreement, we thought we got the implementation delayed, we thought that the insurance from five to two was terrific, and now there's these that raises more questions than they answer. So our hope is to work with you collaboratively. We really are interested in the best interest of all. We want to ensure that the docks remain at Second Bridge, but we want to do it responsibly and with you. And so we are asking, would you be kind enough to consider a working group that would sit down and really flush out what these critical issues are? 
perhaps look at other best practices. If there are other municipalities that have a similar point of view, we could look at. And we want to work with staff because I know that public policy is a very, very difficult and arduous um, process to undertake. And my background is in the development of public policy on a provincial level, so I admire staff. It, this is a tough go, but I think the whole concept of collaboration <laughs> and working with people so that no one feels that someone is, oh my goodness, are they going to come now and try and withdraw that? The issue of trust, transparency and openness is absolutely essential. At the moment, we did have trust and transparency where you felt, and then this came down. I don't think this was the intent by anyone, and I'm not advocate, you know, suggesting that it was. I'm just asking, could we kindly have a working group that will take a serious look at this to help us arrive at a arrive at a solution that will hopefully satisfy the cottagers as well. Apologies to interrupt, Lynn. Sorry. Uh, Sophia has Julian. If they could be unmuted. That'd be appreciated. Okay, well, I don't know. Okay, I, I mean, I think yeah. we're... Can you hear me okay? Okay, yeah. anyway, yeah. That, that's yeah, it in a nutshell. And that, yeah. Yes, Julian Faulkner here. Okay, Julian, we've pretty much gone through the entire presentation already, unfortunately. Good and we're down to just a few more minutes, but if you'd like to speak, go ahead. Yeah. We'll have to be brief. No, I don't, I don't want to uh, in any way uh, uh, interrupt uh, uh, Ms. Ballard, she's absolutely on a roll. Uh, so, uh, Lynn, you finished. I only had a few closing comments once Lynn is finished. Well, I think I really covered all the revision issues that we were concerned about. I've also asked that we, would they kindly, would you kindly consider a working group of which we would be delighted to be part of, and that we hopefully can come up with resolutions that will meet both the cottagers' need as well as the municipality. So, I've left it at that. Julian. Okay, thank you very well, much. well, thank you. And, and I just had, if I may, uh, uh, Mayor, just a few uh, uh, closing comments. And I, I did phone in at the beginning. I've been listening the whole time. It's just apparently you can't phone in and be heard, I guess. Oh, muted. I guess it's... Okay, well, go hello. ahead. Hello. You have a minute or two. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it, I was... Uh, uh, grateful uh, that Ms. Arbor uh, notified us that this matter is going to be deferred. Um, you've heard uh, uh, from uh, Ms. Bullard on, on the issues, uh, and, and there is a whole list of what I would call new issues from this report that's now being deferred. But this is what I want to raise. You had directed, uh, Mayor, you had directed uh, that there be collaboration and, and 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 informal collaboration is certainly one approach but uh, informal collaboration is not working and it's not it's not failing because it's intentional it's simply I would respectfully suggest that the structures are not in place to give staff the tools for uh, effective informal collaboration. It doesn't work. Each time there has been uh, levels of surprise and difficulties that have kind of derailed, and you've seen reports come up, then they have to be put over. They come up, they put over. Why does this happen? It happens because the communication is sort of happening in fits and starts. So what Ms. Bullard is recommending, the idea is to formalize the communication so that we're not left to roots of informal collaboration. And so I would simply support what Ms. Bullard is asking for and just keep in mind that at the end of the day, we're all actually paddling in the same direction. You know, as uh, community members, we wanna make sure the township makes good decisions as well on the issues of uh, whether it's liability or licensing, et cetera. And, and you know the uniqueness of the community being affected, the Second Bridge uh, group. There is no other collective being affected the same way. And so what we're asking for is uh, this committee that will do two things. It will make sure that there's a good consultation formal process. But secondly, you'll have a voice in there to make sure that this uniquely affected community is heard from. So I, I, I really respectfully urge that you adopt this approach 
of the working committee that Ms. Bullard's recommending, and we'll avoid this sort of, uh, frankly, it's becoming a bit of a pattern. Uh, things come up, and oops, and oh, we didn't know that, and, and people are caught by surprise, and unfortunately, that sets collaboration on its heels and, and creates somewhat of an element of anxiety and distrust, and it's not intentional, but it's not helpful. So I'd ask that this direction of collaboration now be somewhat formalized. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Julie. Any, any council have any questions of anyone? respect to Adele um, that's what we really are asking for Joe um, it, it's again the one-off and okay we can address this we can address this we can address this it doesn't really address the policy as a whole so what we are asking could we kindly consider a working group to really take a look at this to ensure that the ratepayers and the staff are assured that we have the best policy in place that can address this issue from both intended parties. So that would be our recommendation. I think, yes, um, not that staff can't respond to individual questions, it doesn't address the whole. And what I'm trying to do, let's address the whole and put it to rest so that council can move forward. So yes. that would be my recommendation. Thank you very much. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Uh, thank you, Mayor Armstrong. Um, Lynn, thank you for that. I think you've raised a number of legitimate questions. Uh, I think some of them are easily addressed. Yes. I think there was simply a typo of yeah. in terms of April and May. So I, totally I think that's agree. something that can be easily dispensed of. Totally so some are more important than others. Yes. And thank you for highlighting 5AK as a particularly important one. Yes. I don't like working groups for the sake of working groups. I believe that this could be resolved with a meeting of yes. oh. representatives from your group. And you sit down and you have the fulsome conversation, you ask the questions and the reason behind it, and you share that information. Right. The other reason I don't like a working group is you are, I know Julian continues to say you're a unique, unique collective, but this policy is for everybody in the municipality mm -hmm. and for a variety of situations, mm -hmm. of which yours is one. Right. So the policy needs to be generic enough to address all of the situations. And if that's a problem with what you're asking, then that can be discussed in your meeting. Right. But that's why I don't think it should be working group because you're not representative of all of the situations we have. But I certainly support a meeting, a sit down, ask the questions, get the reasons behind it. Um, I think that that's the logical next step. And I think that's what Adele and others have recognized in suggesting we defer it until that can take place. And then we come back with a more final version. Would that be a satisfactory? You know, in terms of working group, um, um, sorry, Julian? Yeah, can I briefly speak to that if I may? Please. Sure, you go ahead. I'm Thank sorry. You. Um, I think I'm, was, I'm going to, can you hear I, me okay? Yes, Julian, I believe Lynn was going to respond to that first, if you don't yeah. mind. My apologies, and I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. Okay, Thank just hold on one uh, second, I, Julian. Go ahead, Lynn. I, I think meetings, working groups, whatever we want to call them, I think what we're trying to look yeah. is for a resolution of this particular issue. Mm -hmm. And with your particular point about you have to address the whole, what I would say to you is you had particular issues that were problematic across the lake system that dealt with docks and dock owners and encroachment on the road allowance. And that really, the development of this policy emanated from how do we sort that out? I think the second bridge, where you've had no issues with them for over the 70 years, and people have complied and respectful and doing, has gotten caught up with a policy that tried to address where the issues were. So with respect, um, I think when a working group is looking and when you're trying to do and emanate a policy that affects all, you have to look at the unintended consequences of how those things are caught up with those who are complying and who have who are providing a service you know to the lake frankly from having these docks so with respect uh, deputy mayor 
Um, I, I think this emerged from a situation where you're trying to address the situation. You then extended it to docks and to boathouses and to whatever, and I get it because they're encroaching on like, I'm, I'm in support. I mean, you need it, but this doesn't encroach on anything. We're not, we're on municipal land. So in a way it's a unique situation and it's one of its only kind as I understand it on this particular lake system. You know, um, Kawartha has a little bit of a similar situation, but it's usually individual docks. And so I would ask that there be some consideration for that because I do agree with you you have to develop a policy that affects all, but I think you have to look at the application of the policy and is it directed where it was intended? And that is where the difference is. Okay. Sorry. Just follow that up. Go ahead. All good comments. All yeah. I would say is you have identified what those unintended consequences were and are bringing those forward, yes. which is terrific. Right. Yeah. So I think that your Spirit. group in that case can then have that meeting yeah. and ensure that to the best of our ability, we're able to encompass those. And I, so and I think I, the path forward is the same. Yeah, I think and I think it's a, a collaborative meeting. path, you know, it's and whether it's a working group, whether it's a meeting, if you would accomplish that in a meeting, but <laughs> after the meeting, it can't be, well, here's further revisions, or here's, this is why I'm saying, sorry, Julian? Just, just a minute. If, if I may? Yeah. If I may. Are you finished, Lynn? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Julian. Okay, Hello, Julian. can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, yeah, Deputy Mayor, I hear you. Um, uh, I, words count and words matter. Mayor, Deputy Mayor, you said something that um, I think I didn't understand entirely. Is it the case that you never use working groups? No. Is it the case that you never no. use working groups? No, we very successfully. Because we have very success, if I may finish. We have successfully used working groups in the past to solve a complex problem that requires research and benchmarking and uh, a number of other steps. I don't see this as that. I think this is a more okay. isolated and, situation. And that's right. And that's where um, I think it's really important to focus for a moment on what has transpired in the months of April, May, and June. In each month that this issue has come up, I've had the honor of addressing council. Now, it's an honor, but it's also becoming strange. And I suggest to you that one of the realities is that this has a layer of complexity, and it, it's obviously showing itself in that each time it comes up, something new pops up. Now, what uh, I think the complexity uh, beyond the obvious, which is uh, new issues keep popping up, is that exactly what uh, uh, Lynn uh, Ballard referred to, which is you're attempting to solve one problem and catching a group and a community up uh, in the course of doing that. There is not a one-size-fits-all to this. And what has become clear, and I raised it with Ms. Arbor, and I hope you're hearing me okay. Is the audio working? Yes, you're yeah. fine. Yes, what became clear, and I raised it again with Ms. Arbor today, and the facts will bear me out. There is no other collective community like the group at Second Bridge. Now, some may not like to hear that. I don't know why. It just happens to be a unique situation. This collective of uh, water access folks that are, all have docks, and you know, you observed, Mayor, this is a community of folks that have been there close to a half century that are bothering no one and going to their places on weekends. It's a unique community. So simply saying, well, we need a solution that covers everybody, that, that's not necessarily the case that a one size fits all works. And now I'd like to deal with this or sort of address this issue that you raised, Deputy Mayor, of simply a meeting. I'm going to respectfully suggest to you that what has happened in April, May, and June proves this needs more than a meeting. This needs a formalized collaboration. Why? Because the layers of complexity, whether we are referring to insurance, which by the way is still unsolved, bringing it to 2 million does not convince the company that insures me, Wawanisa, to name the municipality in the insurance policies. The current ramifications of what we've put together 
what is being proposed means I would have to shift all of my insurance. This is me personally, but there are others in the group, same thing. That's a layer we still haven't managed. We haven't managed the registering on title issue. We haven't managed a whole series of issues that are unique to the second bridge scenario. And what I'm trying to say is the working group is meant to address that. So there is a complexity. There is a best practices issue that Ms. Bullard has raised. What is the best practices issue? Well, Kawartha Lake uh, has developed essentially a pilot project for working with DACA communities that is successful and is, is a true collaboration. But what I'm saying is, it's not the words working group that I think are important, it's the words formalized collaboration. Unfortunately, Deputy Mayor, your staff are not equipped to formally collaborate in an informal way. It doesn't work. And so having a meeting is just going to mean we're back together again in June, July, or August, again having to bump something because of the challenges that an informal collaboration presents. So I hear you. Could be meeting. The level of city. When we say a meeting, I don't think, Julian, we mean a meeting. I think we need meetings. That's we can have more correct. than one meeting to try and get to the same common ground that we're all looking for. It's regardless of what the, the structure of that is, whether it's a working group, a advisory committee, or a committee of council, or or just staff and some citizens and a, maybe a member of, of council sit down together and try and come up with something that's going to work for everyone. That's we need to protect the ministry. Fair enough, Mayor, but I would ask that it be formalized. Whatever title you use for that, I would ask that it be formalized because I'm going to respectfully suggest that there's enough layers here to justify it. The formal title, because I think the tools, the formality of it, sends the appropriate signal and structure to staff. Otherwise, we are stuck um, in sort of a no man's land of informal but formal. So. If there is a different title for it than working group, uh, so be it. You would have the wisdom for this, but I'm asking that it be formalized because really it's, it's at that point respectfully. Okay, thank you very much for your comments, Julian. I greatly appreciate it. Okay, anyone else have any comments or questions regarding this? I'm seeing no hands. Go ahead, thank Councilor Franzen. No, I, I think some sort of group has to be established whether it's a working group or a ad hoc group or uh, a series of meetings. And I think one member of the council should, should be attending. And uh, I think we should work this out. It's uh, better than uh, it, it coming to council three or four times in a row. Yeah, I agree, I agree 100%. Go ahead, Councilor Braver. Yeah, through you, Mayor. Uh, I agree with uh, Councilor Franz and, and, uh, and Deputy Mayor's comments as well as Ms. Bullen's. I think in meet, meetings, several meetings until yeah. you get things ironed out. I mean, it, it's fairly simple. Yes. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, but the key is, is just to communicate and understanding the staff and the second bridge that there's an expectation on the second bridge to have some information shared with them Please. Please. if there's Please. anything changed, yes. if, if anything has changed. Right. You know, it just creates a continuity. And, and that sort of thing. So I, I agree with meeting or meetings until it's ironed out. Thank you. Because <clears throat> there has to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, on the second bridge to staff, okay, we're happy with that. Staff, second bridge, you happy with that? Yes, we're happy with that. Staff says, okay, um, if anything comes up that we think might, you know, blindside you, we'll let you know. Delightful. Yeah. I mean, you know, good. And, and I just like to say, uh, with respect to the concept of, of another chair might be helpful, you know, to, to just bring in some additional individuals or whatever to, to help sort some of these issues out because people feel strongly about it on both sides. And that's good, that's good. And staff are doing a great job. We just need to bring it together so we can get a, a recommendation that the community and council can live with. And that's all we're looking for. And I, I just don't know, but I noticed all those other revisions. Does that mean that things will be deferred until this group has a chance to look at it in its totality or how? Anyway, I leave it with you to, to discuss. But those issues that we talked about were hopefully what we would talk about in our meeting, work group, whatever we want to call it. So we can come to a mutual agreement about what does this mean? 
you know, and what are the implications and it, is this doable? I do agree. It has to be something that comes back to each other that is doable. It has to be something that you can accomplish and we want, we right. are protected. So right. I think it's important to make sure we cover all the bases. Well, thank so, you. Go ahead once more. Councilor Breaver. Sorry, through you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> a, a comment that uh, Mr. Faulkner made uh, as well, uh, not, to, not to muddy the waters mm -hmm. at all, but he did mention that Quartzal Lakes uh, have embarked or they, they have a certain process in place. I don't know, like the, the first meeting or meetings, you get uh, everything ironed out that's here today, and then maybe you pull in or you research delightful. what Quartzal Lakes is Delightful. Like. I mean, yeah. I think that it, it, it's trying to look at no staff, and I've been on the staff side of the equation, let me tell you, and in public policy, it's the toughest job in the world, but you need to be able to look beyond and look for best practices, and I'm not saying it hasn't been done. It could easily have been done, and this is, according to Ms. Pally, uh housekeeping. This is just tidying up the house, but when you're sitting on the other side of the fence is saying, holy smoke, what does this mean for the cottagers, and how do we get the level of anxiety down so staff can do their job, so council can approve things, and so we can move forward with the intent that Second Bridge stays where it is with the docks in place. So I, I'd like to thank you very much because I realize this has taken up far more of your time than you had even allocated, and I do appreciate staff's involvement, and I look forward to your no, I'd like to. Uh, and I also uh, thank attempt. you very much. I, I appreciate your thank you. thank you. Okay, thank you, Julie. Okay, go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Yes, I'd like to attempt to make a motion here. Okay. Um, and we can split it up if if pieces of it don't fit with everybody. The first one would be to receive the delegation. Thank you. The second one would be to defer item. Um, I had it. Ten point four point one. Um, and the third part of it would be to designate someone to take the lead in organizing um, a meeting or meetings uh, to discuss some of the concerns or questions, et cetera, and try and reach resolution. And I'm struggling with who that person would be. I'm thinking it might be our CAO, but I'm not sure. I think that's probably the appropriate person to do that. Um, so that would be the third part of my motion, is to designate our CAO. Oh, sorry. Go uh, ahead, Adele. Sorry, I think you'd like to speak to that a little bit. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, I didn't mean to cut you No, off. that's that's fine. That's you fine. I was mumbling. <laughs> I just wanted to add because the report, um, I'm requesting that it be deferred. Uh, Barb Waldron and I had some discussions with our municipal solicitor this morning talking about registration or non-registration <laughs> of these agreements. And it came to light that there are some other things that we're looking at. And we've heard three presentations regarding this from the Second Bridge uh, Citizens Group. So we would like to do it right, and we would like to make some changes to this policy uh, based on best practices, as was mentioned. We'll do the research, and then we say that some consultation will occur with the Citizens Group before we bring a report back to this council. I think that's exactly what we're asking for. And could I ask if, if if we are doing meeting, could we all sit at the same table and 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 talk about this? I find that when you meet person to person and you actually can discuss and and you know you you can raise your points and we can give it 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 just facilitates so much and you don't have to worry about okay somebody meets and then they present. I I, I would just ask that consideration be given that we all sit down together. If I may, that that's the intent of the motion. Thank you. Is to Thank designate you. the CAO to organize those con consultative meetings, and because it won't be a council meeting, yes, then it's yes. not bound by, as you would know, the procedural restrictions that we have. Precisely. Okay. So that was that was a three the part motion. motion. A three part motion. We can separate the pieces out if everybody doesn't agree with all of us. So may <laughs> just clarify, it means that this item is deferred. It, it, sorry, I, is that what I'm? Hearing you say that you yeah that was section two of your is that is that yes the second yeah, one is that we would defer discussion of ten point four point one until and is that a later date when these and that's the report in its entirety yes. correct I can't thank you enough oh I shouldn't say yeah, we need to vote <laughs> okay Sorry. we have a motion I think it's fairly clear to our clerk <laughs> oh dear so we're going to defer ten point four point one to a future date 
and to discuss and to designate the CIO to organize a meeting with the citizens group and to come back with recommendations to council that it's collaborative. Let's make it collaborative. A meeting or meetings. Yeah, meeting or meeting. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Sound reasonable? Okay, do I have a second over that motion? I think Councillor Cadigan would love to second that. Any other conversation? Yes. One point. Go ahead. If we're looking for a council liaison, I'll offer my services. Good. Thank you very much, Councillor Cadigan. That would seem appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other conversation? I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Thank you very much for Thank your presentation. You Thank you, Julian. I apologize you, for the intrusion on your time. Thank oh, you that's, so that's much. That's what we're here for. Yeah, I know. Thank you very but much. I, that's I why do you appreciate things. your help. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, we can move on now to item 10 of our agenda, which is staff reports. And we have item 10.1.1, which is Chelsea Carpenter, Supervisor of Waste and Public Works Coordinator. Chelsea, would you like to speak to this item? Thank you, Mayor Lambshead, and through you. So this report is in regards to a proposed change to the fees and charges bylaw. Staff are looking for support from council to amend Schedule F as follows. Remove sorted and unsorted for mixed loads and replace with just mixed load. Increase the cost of a mixed load to $110 per cubic yard from $55 per cubic yard. Remove the minimum charge for a mixed load. Um, the proposed cost increase is more appropriate um, in comparison to the waste disposal fees of other materials. And should council support these changes, there is an amended fees and charges bylaw later on today's agenda, agenda for council's approval. <clears throat> thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Any uh, conversation about this? Go ahead, Deputy McCoke. Oh, go ahead, Councilor oh, Panza. Uh, I, I was just wondering if uh, the change uh, could, could be incremental. Uh, not from 55 to 110, maybe 55 to 170 or to $75. Just a thought. So, so through you, um, the reason behind the change is, um, is because right now with our construction demolition material, it's $50 per cubic yard. Shingles and drywall is $75 per cubic yard and concrete and bricks is $90 per cubic yard. So with having a mixed load at $55 per cubic yard, it creates a little bit of confusion when staff are applying the waste disposal fee. Um, for example, residents could potentially be getting a, a, a different deal, more or less, um, if we're using the $55 per cubic yard and their mixed load contains um, a larger amount of concrete and bricks because that material has a charge of $90 per cubic yard. Thank you very much. Okay, Deputy Mayor Armstrong, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to raise exactly the same point. I think to move from 55 to 110 in one step is, is probably inappropriate. And secondly, if we have to do that, then at least give notice. So rather than make it effective immediately, we should give a one month or two month uh, notification period so that people can be expecting that. I just don't think anything should be made effective immediately where it doubles the cost. That's just not good practice, in my opinion. Thank you very much. Deputy Armstrong, any other conversation? Chelsea, would you like to speak to that idea of just of curiosity? Staff can do however council directs. That's no problem. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Anyone prepared to make any motions to that idea? So just want to your favorite. Go ahead. Add a comment uh, through you, Mayor. <clears throat> Chelsea, it's, uh, it doesn't go unnoticed that you, you provided comparisons, um, <clears throat> and the cheapest one was $100, uh, both in Highlands East and, um, and just in Cabin Monaghan, or Monaghan. <clears throat> but I think it's just, I agree with uh, Councillor Franzen and Deputy Mayor Armstrong. It's just a, a big uh, a big bite to, to take uh, to go. From 55 to 110 so but we do see your uh, comparisons thank you thank you for pointing that out to council braver go ahead council brandon yeah one further question from through the mayor uh wouldn't bricks or blocks a load of brick and blocks cost more when you bring it to the uh, transfers or to the uh, bansford site it's all my yeah, and the bulkier stuff would be would be cheaper if it was drywall, etc. 
through you, I'm not sure I, I understand um, the question exactly. So I'd be asking for some clarification. Um, I will note that Bensford Road does have a scale. Yeah, because a cubic yard of, uh, of brick and block uh, would be far heavier than uh, a cubic yard of drywall material. Absolutely, yep. And that's reflected in the current waste disposal fees for that item. That's why there is a charge of $90 per cubic yard because of the weight of that material. But we're made, uh, we're, uh, you're recommending that we make it all the same. So that's only for mixed loads. So if a resident comes in with a trailer of all different types of materials, construction demolition material, um, so some wood, they have some concrete in there as well, as well as some drywall that, and it isn't sorted so that staff can easily differentiate what the cost would be and able to apply the individual waste disposal fee for each material coming in. Then there's the option of having the mixed load charge because it does take a lot of staff time um, to assist the resident with um, directing a resident to the appropriate location at the waste disposal site to, dis to properly sort their material. Um, so that's why there is an increased cost to the mixed load um, because staff aren't able to easily differentiate the different materials within mixed loads typically. Any other questions? Go ahead, Joe Cat. Councilor Cat. Through you, Mayor, would it be a good time now to reduce confusion between uh, weight and volume and go with what we're paying the city or the county for our dumping, which is by weight. They'll go by ton rather than by volume. Kelsey? So through you, depending on the material, it can go to different places. So some of it goes to the Bensford Road landfill and some of it goes to waste connections. Um, and it'll be mixed in with other material. It won't be um, segregated to know the exact cost of that material. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone prepared to make a motion? We've had lots of conversation, great questions, good answers. I'm seeing no. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Lamb said, well, I, I think it's difficult for council on the spot to make up a, a new schedule of fee changes. Um, but I think you've heard the concerns. You know, I, I think we're supportive of the movement to 110. You've done a very good job supporting. Uh, providing the supporting rationale for that charge. I think our concern is that it's a big leap to go from 55 to 110 all at once and that there ought to be proper notification. So I don't know if we would prefer to defer it and have staff come back with a recommendation on that. If not, then we'll dictate something, but that's that's probably not the best approach. I think in council's defense, I think just deferring it for till our next meeting till we can have a decision on um, when and what kind of incremental increases we would like to have and have a little conversation with staff and we can have that in the report. So defer it then. Okay. Would be. Then I would make the motion to uh, defer this to staff to come back with a recommendation uh, that accommodates the uh, concerns raised by raised around the amount of the increase and the time frame for making it effective. Do we have a seconder for that motion? Yeah. Councillor Franzen for a seconder. Any other conversation? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. Call in favor. That motion has carried. Okay. We have move on to 10.2, which is recreation facilities. We have no report. 10.3, which is fire and emergency services. We have no report. We can move on to 10.4, which is building and planning. And we can go to 10.4.1. I don't know, Adele, if you wanted to speak to this or we could just make a motion to defer. Through you, Mr. Mayor. I think through your of uh, the presentation that was made today, the delegation, and there was a recommendation uh, that came from council. I'm supportive of that, and we'll do whatever we can to provide an updated policy and uh, look at all the options available to the municipality and take into consideration the comments made by the presentations to the various council meetings. Okay, thank you very much. So, we want to take a motion. We still need a motion of some form. Go ahead. Uh, we already have a motion to defer uh, Councillor Armstrong or Deputy Mayor Armstrong's motion or three part motion included yeah. a motion to defer. I think we need it again at this item or no? 
Uh, for you, I can just note in the minutes that uh, this item was deferred, uh, item 9.1, being the delegation. Thank you very much. Clerk, Jesse Clark. Okay, we can, we can move on to 10.4.2 of our agenda, which is a Del Arbor Art Planner. Would you like to speak to this item? Yes, thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was happy to provide some working draft documents of the various bylaws that we're looking for putting in the administrative monetary penalty system. Um, we also have a bylaw that was draft for a hearing officer, the procedures for hearings. I've included the open air burn and fireworks bylaw, a noise bylaw, and a nuisance bylaw. And since the um, agenda was posted with these working documents, I've gone back and started to make various revisions uh, to the documents. And you'll know that in the actual AMPS bylaw itself provides for um, if there is a penalty notice that's given and you, there's a repeat offense, it'll escalate in cost. So we need to provide that for each of the bylaws and then include it in the AMPS, but you'll see that the pages were blank at the end because we haven't determined that at this point in time. And just to keep in mind, when I'm looking at the various um, penalty fines or penalty amounts we're putting in our bylaws, the Municipal Act states that an administrative penalty established by the municipality shall not be punitive in nature, and secondly, shall not exceed the amount reasonably required to promote compliance with the bylaw of the municipality. So we have to keep that in mind when we're putting in the escalating uh, penalties. And I'd be happy to answer any questions and for council's considerations once I have these bylaws drafted again, our second version, I'd like to circulate to council and I'll put it on our website as well, prior to us doing the agenda on for the July 11th meeting. Perfect. Thank you very much. Any questions over there? Why, Councilor Braver? So you, you almost sort of answered uh, my question, but uh, how is how is uh, it going to be handled as far as the compounding offense structure? And is there a ceiling as to the amount of the compounded fine? And that and that's uh, 4.2. Through you, Mr. Mayor, as I mentioned, through the Municipal Act, it can't be punitive. Right. So there's a, a discretionary uh, process that myself will provide to council, and council will have to make uh, a recommendation on the lines that we are adding to the actual bylaws. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for this, Adele. Um, I think you've asked for comments back to you, which which I will do. Uh, in writing, I just had two areas that to, to sort of um, bring forward. One is just a little bit greater clarity on who the penalty is uh, assigned to, for lack of a better word, the person who did the behavior <laughs> and the owner of the property. I didn't say that very well, but I think you uh, understand what I mean. <laughs> so just a little better clarity on that uh, in the document. And the other thing was just a little more clarity on the role of the CBO. I wasn't quite sure. I understand screening officer, understand hearing officer, wasn't quite so clear on the CBO. So um, those are just the two things I bring forward, not looking for a response uh, because you have asked for comments, which I will put in writing. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a lot of work and thank you very much, Adele. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. Go ahead, Councillor Brandon. A motion to receive the report. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Let's see Councillor Cadigan for a seconder. Any other conversation? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Just let's make sure that the motion is uh, receiving the report, but also that comments um, be provided to the planner by June 30th. I'd like to make sure that's in the motion. Okay, no. is recommended. Okay, perfect. <coughs> okay. I, I need, okay, I'll call for the vote. All in favor. That motion is carried. Okay, thank you very much. We can move on to 10.5 of our agenda, which is finance, and we can go move on to 10.5.1, which is Donna Taggart, our CEO treasurer. Would you like to speak to this item? Yes, thank you. And through you, before you is the accounts payable for the month of May. 
you will see that we continue to have uh, more and more electronic payments, which is good to see. Uh, but just for your information, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Donna, does anyone have any questions? Go ahead. Before you put the gag order on me today. <laughs> you're you're this is why we're here. We want to communicate. Um, council may not know this, but I um, OCD review the accounts payable report every month for anything over $1,000. And if there's anything that looks that I just don't understand, I will ask Donna <laughs> through an email. On this one, um, I did have one that I thought she could clarify, and it's on our uh, agenda, page 178. It's J&J &J Business Services, and it's repairs to each of our community halls for a total of $15,000. Just wondered if you could share what that is. So thank you, and through you, that is actually the installation of the new FOBs. Oh. So the repair wow. is misleading. For sure. Wow. Yeah. That's an expensive. Uh, that. So we knew you, that. We budgeted yeah, for it. Yeah. That is only that. half the amount yeah. at this time. Right. So, yeah. There was a, a set budget for that work. Well, glad to know that's been done. Yeah. <laughs> I right. think that's the only one that I have. Okay. Thank you. Well, I would like to thank staff for getting my fob put on my keys that I left behind at the municipal office. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. The motion. Yes. I'll, motion. I'll move to receive it. Okay, so we have a motion to receive the report. Do I have a seconder? Okay. Councillor Braybrook for a seconder. Any other conversation? None. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Thank you very much. We can move on to 10.5.2 of our agenda, which is Donna Taggart, our CAO treasurer, a grant policy update. Go ahead, Donna. You would like to speak to this file. Yes, thank you. And through you. So before you is the updated community grant policy 5.23 for council consideration. Uh, you will recall at the May 16, 2023 meeting, Council was did receive an amended grant policy and re, at that time requested feedback from the public on the changes proposed under that policy. So some of those changes included uh, a grant evaluation matrix that would help Council in determining grant amounts, a slight increase in the amount that's awarded annually based on 0 0.660 of the previous year tax levy instead of 0 0.50. And just some clarification on the use of funding for operating expenses for things like rent and payroll and utilities and some requirements for um, those receiving grants to adhere to applicable legislation. So I can tell you that we did receive six comments. It was put out to the individuals that received grants last last year, the, the groups. So some of those comments were uh, a request for the ability to uh, for programs and services to be offered outside of the boundary of the municipality, a request that volunteer insurance amounts be eligible for grant funding, and consideration of the requirement that organizations must fundraise to support continued operations. There was a request to clarify that grant spending could take place over multiple years if approved, and some concerns expressed over the wording that organizations would need to adhere to applicable legislation, because that could be difficult for some organizations. So the attached policy attempts to look at those comments received. It clarifies and expands the language to recognize um, those comments, as well as there is the ability for the organizations to utilize the services of our consultant, SHRP, to undertake some of the training that would that would be helpful for those groups. So we would assist, in, and that would be at uh, no charge, and we would assist with that process as staff as well. So there was a, an additional comment just that uh, expressing support for the new policy and one requesting that council only consider applications that are received before the deadline. So in closing, just asking council to approve the updated grant policy. And after, if council uh, approved that today, we would put that out through the website, social media, and once again, to all those receiving a 2023 grant. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? 
I think Councilor Braver. I'd like to uh, make a motion that Council receives the report and that Council approve the updated community grant policy 5.23 as attached. And further, that Council direct staff to share the updated community grant policy 5.23 through their municipality's website, social media channels, and directly to all recipients of a 2023 community grant. Thank you very much for that motion. I'm looking for a seconder. I see Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a seconder. Any other conversation? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Okay. We'll move on now to item 10.6 of our agenda, which is administration. We can go to 10.6.1. Rachel Stark, our economic development and marketing coordinator. Rachel, would you like to speak to this file? Yes, thank you. Uh, before you is a report regarding a draft internal communications plan for the municipality. Uh, the creation of the plan comes from a recommendation out of the letter M's communication review report completed in 2020, which states the importance of the municipality having communications planning in place. Using recommendations from that report, along with input from staff and council strategic directions and communication tactics were created to be implemented over the next two years. The re recommendation is that council receive the report and further that all comments on the draft internal communications plan be forwarded to the economic development and marketing coordinator by July 7th, 2023 for a follow-up report to council. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Any comments or questions from council? I'm seeing none. Are we ready to make the motion to proceed as recommended? Go ahead. Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Make the motion and a comment if it's seconded um, that we receive the report and that all comments be forwarded to the Economic uh, Development Marketing Coordinator by July 7th. Okay, do I have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Franzen for a seconder, and I believe Deputy Mayor Armstrong had a question. The comment is that, you know, appreciate seeing this, Rachel. I know that you've been working on this for quite a long time, and it's nice to see that things will get formalized and assuming that it's um, com containing the, the many recommendations and concerns of staff, it's really an internal process. And so I think council's um, role in all of this is to be aware of it <laughs> and to be grateful that it's in place, but I'm not sure that we honestly have much a uh, role in terms of comments or changes. Okay, thank you for your comment. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Okay, we can move on to 10.6.2 of our agenda. Rachel Stark, our Economic Development and Marketing Coordinator, would you like to speak to this item? Thank you, and through you. Uh, before is a report regarding allowing nonprofit meetings in council chambers. Uh, staff and council were approached by a resident at the May 2 council meeting to request the consideration of allowing public meetings for nonprofit groups to take place in the municipal office or the station for fire hall. The request is mainly due to the lack of public meeting spaces available in the west side of Trent Lakes. After researching different options, it is a recommendation that council receive the report and further that council direct staff to provide the council chambers as a free of charge meeting space for nonprofit groups to host professional meetings and further that council direct staff to develop a policy that details meaning eligibility, including, but not limited to the points listed in the report. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Rachel. Any questions of Rachel on this policy? I see none. Anyone prepared to make a motion? I see Councilor Cadigan. I'll make a motion that we receive the report with all the recommendations okay. of staff. Okay. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a seconder. Any conversation? I think that this is just a really good step forward in living, letting people use our municipal office in a controlled manner. I think this is a great, great step. Thank you. Okay, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Thank you very much, Rachel. Okay, we can move on now to 10.7, which is corporate services. We'll move 10.7.1. Bianca Dragisovic, our Deputy Clerk. My apologies, Bianca. Could you like to speak to this item? Thank you, and through you. Um, an RFT was issued for the Salmon Lake Road culvert replacement, and eight bids were received in accordance with the RFT. All bids received were in excess of the approved budgeted amount, 
<clears throat> and in accordance with the purchasing policy, delegated approval authority to department heads is only for procurements within the approved budget. So this procurement must be awarded by council. Staff are recommending that the tender be awarded to the lowest compliant bidder, Trilith Contracting Inc., and that the additional funding of $91,358.02 be funded from the Canada Community Building Fund. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Bianca. Any questions from council? Go ahead, Councillor Franz. Just a, a motion of support that to approve that purchase, and uh, it's amazing how prices have gone. Mm -hmm. Sure enough. Do I have a seconder for that motion? I see Councillor Cadigan for a seconder. Any other conversation? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. Call in favor. That motion has carried. Hope the culprit is gold plated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can move on to 10.7.2 of our agenda, which is once again Bianca Kargisevic. Would you like to speak to this item? Thank you. And through you, um, before you was the report for council expenses received for the month of May and for the remainder of April for council's consideration and approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any conversation? Any questions of council? I'm seeing none. Anyone prepared to make a motion? Go ahead, Councillor Braver. We'll make a motion to receive. And approve. And approve. Okay. Councillor Cadigan for a seconder. Any conversation? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. We can move on to item 11 of our agenda which is correspondence for information. We can receive them all at one time or we can take each one out or one out to do something else. At anyone's request. Motion to receive all of the correspondence. Okay, we have a motion to receive them all. I have a seconder, Councilor Braybrook, any conversation? You see none, I will call for the vote. All in favor, that motion has carried. Very much. Correspondence for action, we have none. We can move on to item 13 of our agenda, which is bylaws. Bylaw number one, which is 13.1, which is the amend the fees and charges. We will, mm -hmm. that was deferred at yeah. an earlier point in the meeting. Okay, thank you very much for the update. That was our clerk, Jesse Clark. We can move on to 13.2 of our agenda, which is a zoning bylaw amendment file number 2302 for Krenzel. Go ahead. Motion to support. Councillor Transen, do I have a seconder for the motion? Councillor Braver for a seconder. Any other questions or comments? Okay, none, I will call for the vote. Call in favor. That motion is carried. Okay, we can move on to item 14 of our agenda, which is business arising out of a previous meeting. Does anyone have any Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Marilyn. So I'm sorry, this is going to be a surprise, but um, I noticed in our AP that we paid Greenview Consulting $34,000 for work on our new um, facilities building. And I just wondered what the status of that was. And since Evan is here, I thought we could give him an opportunity to speak. <laughs> Go ahead, Evan. Yes, thank you, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Through you, Mayor Lambshead, um, just to give you an update on that. So that was partially on the redesign that we had the discussions, I believe, I don't want to say a month, but I know we had discussions earlier this year sort of thing about some sort of changes. So that was reflected on those changes. Um, and we are actually at the point where we are out to tender. So the building is out on the market. We had a pre, we had a site meeting with prospective bidders um, last week. I think um, and we had there's five contractors that attended that so there was there will be five contractors bidding on the project um, and it closes next Thursday um, subsequent we hope to hold a special meeting at some point in July um, following a review by her consultant and internally as well um, with recommendation on what we believe um, as we've received many estimates on the construction costs we really have don't really have an idea of what it's going to come in at especially with the way the market's been I'm just speaking to Councillor Franzen's comment regarding the culvert. That was the budget cost that we got back in 2021, which was only two years ago, and that just shows you how much things have gone up. It's 
the market right now is quite crazy. So yes, yeah, so we are out at tender process. It closes next Thursday with a report to council to follow a special meeting most likely at some point in July. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very that. much. Thanks for the update. Thanks for asking for <laughs> Any other business arising out of a previous meeting? <coughs> Seeing none. We can move to item 15 of our agenda, which is notice of motion. Not seeing any information items. Does anyone have any information items to share? Go ahead. I have one Go very quick family. one. The, the BCC has a charging station for vehicles and it works on credit cards and apparently it's already been used and it worked well. So I think that's the first one in turn like as far as I know. We've got more. Catch a come Marina has one. Okay. Nice to see that we're getting a few of them around. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for the information. Any other information items? Go ahead, Councillor Braver. Through you, Mayor. Uh, I wanted to thank uh, Matt Winges for uh, attending a, a meeting, sort of an impromptu meeting last week at uh, Lakehurst Hall. <clears throat> and that, <clears throat> that was with regards to uh, their, their hopes and plans of developing the lower bowl. Um, at the hall, so uh, something will be coming forward. Uh, there will be a presentation at some point. I'm not sure whether it'll be July or August's uh, meeting, but I wanted to thank uh, Matt, Dylan, and, and hopefully we can work in coordination with them and, and incorporate it into the open spaces uh, master plan. Um, and, and there's some good conversation had. So uh, we'll just We'll wait till we have some, uh, I guess, some good drawings and, and a good idea of of the, the go forward plan and <clears throat> some that Matt and Dylan can get their you know teeth around and uh, possibly um, move forward with uh, with that uh, project. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thanks for pointing that out. And we go, go ahead, Mr. Sorry, I threw you one more. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Uh, yesterday, I uh, <clears throat> I attended the uh, Shandos Lake uh, rollout of their uh, boat washing station. Um, uh, it, it was it was interesting. It was a solar power <laughs> solar powered uh, station, and um, um, we'll see how it uh, we'll see how it works mm -hmm. out. So uh, I got an idea of what the costing would be and that sort of thing and the logistics, but we can we can discuss that at another time. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, any other information items? <coughs> I'm seeing none. We can move on to our closed session part. I would like to entertain a motion to move into closed. Mr. Cadigan for a mover. Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a seconder. And I will, we are going into closed. For the Ontario Municipal Act, section 239.2, to discuss personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, municipal employees, contracted persons, and D, labor relations for employee negotiations, municipal employees. <coughs> I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. We are in closed. Okay, we are out of code. We can move on to 7.2 of our agenda, which is rise from closed session. Could I get a motion from a call? Councillor Franzen for a mover and Councillor Cadigan for a seconder. All in favor? That motion is carried. We are back in our open regular meeting. Our regular meeting. We can move on to section 18 of our agenda, which is business arising from the closed session meeting. And we can adopt the minutes, which is 18.1 on our agenda. We are prepared to make a motion to adopt. Deputy Mayor Armstrong and Councillor Cadigan for a seconder. All in favor? That motion is carried. And we have... uh, coming out of close, the recommendation is to authorize the CAO Treasurer to sign an agreement with Aaron and Bearless uh, for legal services. We have a motion to that effect. I'd like to make that motion. And a seconder. Deputy Mayor Armstrong, any conversation? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Okay, we can move on now to uh, section 19 of our agenda, which is adoption of the confirming bylaw, which is 19.1. I will entertain a motion to do so. Seeing Councillor Cadigan for a mover, Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a seconder. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. 
we can move on to section 20 of our agenda, which is adjournment. Would anyone like to make a motion to adjourn? Councilor Braybrook for a mover. Councilor Cadigan for a seconder. All in favor? That motion has carried. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, staff. Thank you, councilors.